when Boko Haram really erupted, all kinds of uh, you know, nicely analytical sounding explanations were being given. People preferred to be in denial, even after clear evidence that you're dealing with a bunch of homicidal maniacs motivated by a particular virulent strain of a world religion. Uh, it was almost like this, what you call here, political correctness manifested in action, not just in words. This is why, this is how we are in this situation today. At the beginning, it was controllable. You could use political will, you could deal with uh, unemployment, marginalization, the Almajiri, for instance, who were serving as foot soldiers. But the government refused to scotch the snake right on the head. Are you insinuating that there's just no way to stop Boko Haram at the moment? I'm sorry that we've reached the point where it is completely a military situation. Well, I mean, the government has sent in the military, but this hasn't stopped the, these latest attacks. The suicide bomber, that's, a, that's a, a, a kind of unique phenomenon itself, which is very difficult to cope with, right? However, when you have an organization which pronounces itself committed to Islamizing the nation and says that anyone seen issues in effect a fatwa against Nigerian humanity. And now you're dealing with something very clear and at the same time it's a development which could have been scotched at the very beginning. I mean, is there really a will within the government of President Goodluck Jonathan, not just him himself, but within his government, to stop Boko Haram? After all, uh, a few years ago, he came out to say, I do believe that Boko Haram has infiltrated my government. He not only said that, but I think even the police himself, they've admitted that uh, some politicians were behind the very beginning of Boko Haram. They were using, they were distorting and bastardizing religion. For political ends. Well, I mean, after the first uh, bomb blast in Abuja two weeks ago, we saw President Goodluck Jonathan visit the scene and then go off on an election campaign. I criticize that in Port Harcourt, you know, very strongly. It was the most unfeeling and uh, really demoralizing. Not just go for a campaign, but, you know, the whole body language, the dancing. It was like 200 and something of our pupils, of our children, whom we sent to school, whom we insisted must go to school, and for whom we're thereby responsible. It's as if it doesn't matter. It's like trivia. By now, President Jonathan should have addressed the nation, begun to mobilize the nation. And when I say mobilize, I mean mobilize almost as if we uh, mobilize the way we, uh, the nation was mobilized at the beginning of the Civil War. Governors should by now be asking for volunteers, should be forming the equivalent of JTFs, these are the auxiliaries of the force, military, yes. shouldn't wait for Boko Haram to come and hit them. This is what I mean by mobilizing true leadership, which you speak to the nation, you make people understand that a new level of awareness, even of neighbors, you know, has become mandatory if the nation is to survive. That is lacking.